Welcome to St. James and St. Brennan's Anglican Church for Sunday, September 12th. Reverend Jody is away for a few weeks due to some minor surgery. Right now she is at home recuperating. They will be having morning prayer service and a book of common prayer. Well, worship the Lord, the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Dearly beloved sisters and brothers, the scripture moves us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not assemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lonely, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we, we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have strayed and from the air and shape of ways of blushing, we have followed too much the advice and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left unknown the things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, visible offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promise to declare unto mankind, in Christ peace you are Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of a sinner, but rather we may turn from our wickedness, May you pardon and absolve all of us that truly repent and unfailingly believe in your holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech you, Heavenly Father, to grant us true, true repentance, and that with the Holy Spirit we may continue to do those things which please you, and that for the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come into eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and thou shalt shall forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand above all corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his that he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the 
shall say Psalm 24 responsibly by the full verse. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn their weapons of our God. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the, clean, the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he in this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. Is the King of glory. Creator and ruler of all, open our hearts that the King of glory may enter and bring us rejoicing to your holy mountain, where you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Greetings. The first lesson is from the first book of Kings. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks to pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, and he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, for the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint, you shall anoint Hazael as king of over Aram. Also you shall, shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimsha, as king over Israel and you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, of Abel and Mahulah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu, Jehu shall kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the 12th. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. 
Here ends the first lesson. The second lesson is from the book of Acts. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, the teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the men to be put outside for a short time. Then he said to them, fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. For some time ago, Theudeus rose up claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him but he was killed and all who followed him were dispersed and disappeared. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up at the time of the census and got people to follow him. He also perished and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I will tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. They were convinced by him, and when they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. Here ends the second lesson. Please stand. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that he us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant 
baptism as we say, I believe in God. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. Grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And evermore May clean our hearts within us. And take not that Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may turn to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Calling for peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Calling for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will have led to right hearts, Pete. I started attending St. James and St. Brendan's several years ago, and as part of my journey to be confirmed, I began reading the book, This Anglican Church of Ours, by Patricia Bays. Perhaps you've read it. In the book, she says, 
Anglicans believe that it is right for us to be involved in social and political action in order to make our society a place in which we can all flourish and grow. This was a new concept to me. And, uh, and we are, as, um, as I was going over this, uh, you're going to be hearing more about this today. Children are told growing up that one should avoid discussing religion and politics, especially at the dinner table. I somehow took that from my experience that you don't mix the two. Politics was rarely discussed in my home, even though my father was a minister. I am learning, however, as time went on, that it is important, in order to gain a better understanding of scripture, to learn the culture and political background of the passages that we read. Today, we're going to do that. In the New Testament passage that was read to us by Robin, in Acts 5, we see even centuries ago that there were political groups. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, who were always at odds with one another for many obvious reasons, collaborated together on the Sanhedrin, the highest Jewish court made up of rulers, elders, and teachers. They were the recognized voice of God and the law. The Sadducees were a wealthy, powerful political sect who supported the Romans. They embraced a school of thought that only accepted the first five books of the Old Testament. And they did not believe in the afterlife, and they strictly adhered to their rituals. They had the priestly responsibilities in the temple, and they, they had challenged Jesus, and now they were challenging the apostles for their teaching on the resurrection. The Pharisees, on the other hand, were another sect who were the craftsmen and the teachers of the law. They were not as supportive of the Romans, and they were waiting for their Messiah. Luke, the author of Acts, and as I read a few um, chapters before today's passage, tells us that the apostles had already been put in jail once because they had been in the temple where they had preached, healed, and performed miracles. And when they were released from jail, they went right back to the temple and continued healing the sick, and the number of believers was growing. Now we find them in jail again, because the Jewish leaders felt that what the apostles were teaching contradicted the law of Moses. However, God had sent his angels to lead them safely from prison that night, and the apostles had been directed by the angel to go to the temple again to continue preaching and teaching and telling the good news of what they had seen. The high priest sent for the apostles the next morning, and the doors to the jail were still locked, the guards were still on guard, but the apostles were nowhere to be found. Hollywood movies have nothing on this. The high priests learning this were perplexed, to say the least, until someone arrived to say, the men that you put in jail are standing in the temple, openly teaching the people. As you can imagine, the high priests and his officials were filled with strong emotion. One being the worst kind of jealousy. They were jealous because people were gathering around the apostles, listening to what they were saying, and seeing all the miracles that were being performed. They were becoming followers, and this did not look good on the Jewish leaders. The officials called a full assembly of the Sanhedrin, all 70 members. The captain of the temple guard went to the temple and brought the apostles out without violence. Because they were afraid, the people would turn on them and stone them. I believe it is important for us to note that the apostles went peacefully so as to follow the law as God instructs us to do. 
Romans 13 tells us there is no authority except which God has established. And they followed that Jewish law. Importantly, Peter and the apostles did not apologize, and they were filled with a boldness given by God, saying we must obey God rather than any human authority. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who believe him. They stood up. The rulers wanted to put the apostles to death, but a man named Gamaliel stood up and took charge of the situation. He was a very influential member of the Sanhedrin. He was the most well-respected rabbi of his day and an authoritative teacher of the law. Gamaliel was the right man for the task at hand. Isn't it interesting how God can, in, can intervene with unexpected people in unexpected places? Gamaliel, showing great wisdom, ordered the apostles to be taken outside for a while. He diffused the situation, and then he told stories, maybe to let things cool down a bit. He would have been a good social worker. He told of two men who were killed and whose followers were dispersed, and we heard that today in our reading. He seemed to imply the same fate might come to the apostles if their work was not of God and their movement would die out as the others had. But then his advice, calm down, or we might say, chill out. Leave the apostles alone. If it is of God, then you will find yourselves fighting against God, and you will not be able to overthrow them. You do not want to be at odds with God. Maybe he did not speak from sympathy for the apostles, but from his insight into God's sovereign working on earth. We don't know, but it seemed that a Pharisee had come to the defense of the apostles, and miraculously the rest of the religious leaders listened to him. The apostles then were warned never to speak in the name of Jesus again. Then, according to the law of disobedience in those days, they were beaten with 39 lashes of a whip. Was that the end? No. Contrary to what we might expect, the apostles left rejoicing. Rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus. They accepted their consequences and they freely continued on as if nothing had happened. First in the temple courts and then house to house. The apostles were quick to speak up with the boldness that the Holy Spirit gave them and told everyone what they had seen with their own eyes. They continued to do miracles because, of course, God was with them. And the word spread across ethnic and national boundaries to the end of the earth. This was God's great plan, and the work was of God. I feel very humbled as I read this. Any suffering that I have had in my life, unfortunately, does not see me rejoicing as my first response. Perhaps you can relate more to the Old Testament passage that was read in 1 Kings 19 that tells a very different way to stand up. Elijah had become very discouraged. I have had enough, Lord. I am giving up. The Lord fed him and ministered to him, and then, when Elijah was stronger, told him to go out and stand up on the mountain. 
which Elijah did. Then God sent the wind, the earthquake, and fire. But God was not in any one of those. The Lord spoke to him in the silence, the quietness. I think this is the way God often speaks to us today, but we have to make time for quietness. And I struggle with that. I keep busy. God encouraged Elijah because he had a job for him to do to show God's never ceasing love for his people. The thread that runs through both of these passages is that God loves his people and continues and continues to try and reach them. What, does these, what do these passages teach us about living in today's world? The apostles and Elijah both stood up for God in different ways. What is God asking for us in these very political times, in these very different times. What beautiful examples we have read today to prayerfully make a choice, stand up, trust God, and then be willing, as they were, the apostles were, to take the consequences. By submitting to a God who is in control, we will receive peace in spite of the circumstances. The zeal, faith, joy, commitment, and obedience of these early apostles and an Old Testament priest are a great example and encouragement to us. How will we stand up and be involved in God's plan? Prayer for the Queen and the Commonwealth. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, the parliaments of the Commonwealth, and all who are set in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness, and peace, to the honor of thy holy name and the good of thy church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer, prayer for the clergy and people. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom come every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants to give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people, particularly to those in our parish family and those of our healing prayer list who desire now to offer up their praise and thanksgiving. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, and above all, for thine inestimable love and redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and of the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, 
by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We have the insert for the announcements. I know we enjoyed the uh, barbecue which was held at the uh, Mariners Park. It was great to see the attendance and to see some people we haven't seen because of the COVID situation. Please take this home with you so you can refer to it during the coming weeks.